Genshin Impact is a wondrous game with an ever-growing world and stylish art design is able to capture the imagination of players. Whether you enjoy the world, story or gameplay, one aspect that will keep players coming back to the game are the amazing characters. So I'm Darkblade with a character guide to Bennett in Genshin Impact. In this guide we will briefly cover the basic lore of the character, their moves and abilities, weapon options, stat priorities and artifact builds. Remember though that these builds and guides are aimed at free to play and low spender players so they will feature characters as if they were mainly constellation level 0 although there will be a few exceptions with 4 star weaponry. Bennett is a 4 star character who wields a sword and a pyro vision but the only way to get him is either through the gacha system or when he appears in the item store. Bennett is a very good natured adventurer who hails from Mondstadt but one of his biggest identifiers is his luck or lack of it. He's a very unlucky lad, unfortunately. No matter what he does in life, he seems to be followed by a cloud of unluckiness that can even pass on to others. Whether this is just superstition or some sinister force at work, we're not sure yet. Bennett is an orphan, but was raised by the Adventurers Guild. As a result, he feels a close bond to other adventurers. But thanks to his unlucky nature, rarely will other adventurers want to team up with him. Thus, he is the only member of Benny's adventure team. But despite all this, despite his unlucky nature, Bennett remains very positive. And despite him being unlucky, he's also very inventive and creative as a result of all of this. The fact that he factors in how unlucky he is allows him to work his way around certain situations and come out on top. But let's move on to talk about the talents available to Bennett in Genshin Impact. Now every character has access to various combat and passive talents. Combat talents being your moves and abilities that you actually manually perform, while passive talents are mechanics that work in the background of a character. Now for Bennett's first combat talent you have your normal attacks also known as Strike of Fortune. When pressing the attack button Bennett will perform a 5 hit combo with his sword. Alternatively you can hold down the attack button to which you'll consume a small amount of stamina to unleash a 2 rapid sword strike ahead of you. This will knock opponents back. Finally, when you press the attack button whilst in the air, you'll perform a plunging attack. This will cause Bennett to plummet towards the ground, damaging enemies in an AoE around the impact zone. Now, the second combat talent available to Bennett and also his elemental skill is known as Passion Overload. When performed, Bennett will put all of his fire and passion into his sword, resulting in a fiery slash, but there are different effects to this. You can either perform a quick press of the elemental skill, to which you'll perform a single swift attack that deals pyro damage to opponents. You can also hold the elemental skill as well. This will charge up Bennett's sword, resulting in different effects. Should you only hold it for a brief time, you'll reach level 1, which will cause Bennett to strike twice with his sword, dealing pyro damage on both attacks and launching opponents. Or alternatively, you can hold it to level 2, which will unleash three consecutive attacks that deal pyro damage, but the last attack triggers an explosion that will launch both Bennett and his enemy into the air. Even though this attack launches Bennett, it will deal no damage to him. But of course being launched means that you'll lose control of Bennett whilst he performs his recovery animation. I should also note that holding down and performing the charged passion overload attacks will incur a longer cooldown on the ability unfortunately. But that brings us on to his third combat talent, which is known as the Fantastic Voyage, which is his elemental burst. When activated, Bennett will perform a jumping attack that will deal pyro damage to opponents around him and also create an inspiration field. Whilst the jumping attack is a straightforward hard hitting pyro damaging move, the inspiration field has different effects. Now characters within the field are affected by this inspiration field in different ways. For example, if the health of a character within the AoE is equal to or below 70%, their health will continuously regenerate, allowing them to heal. The amount that is healed is also based off of Bennett's overall HP. So the more HP Bennett has, the quicker that a player will be healed. However, this healing will stop once it reaches 70%, and afterwards, if that character has a higher health pool than 70%, they will instead gain an attack bonus based off of Bennett's base attack. So if a character has more than 70% HP, they'll instead get an attack bonus, and this attack bonus can be quite substantial. But when it says Bennett's base attack, they don't mean Bennett's overall attack, they mean the base attack that is only provided to the character via the weapon he uses. So the higher base attack on the weapon you have for Bennett, the higher the attack bonus that the inspiration field from Fantastic Voyage will provide. It has nothing to do with the attack values found on your artifacts. Finally, it also imbues characters within the AoE with Pyro, which is something you need to be wary of. 
This is different from character weapons being imbued with Pyro, which we'll talk about more in the Constellation section. Now let's move on to the passive talents. First of all is Rekindle. This is a simple passive talent that decreases your passion overloads cooldown, so your elemental skill, by 20%, so you're able to use your elemental skill more often. And as passion overload already has a quick cooldown, this makes it even more effective. The next passive talent is Fear Not. When in the inspiration field created by Fantastic Voyage, so your elemental burst, Passion Overload, so your elemental skill, takes on the following effects. Firstly, it will have its cooldown reduced by a further 50%, meaning that you can use your elemental skill with Bennett very often when you're actually standing within the inspiration field. And on top of that, Bennett will not be launched into the air when performing the maximum charged Passion Overload. So again, some nice little buffs to your elemental skill when you're using your elemental burst in unison with it. And then finally, the last passive talent is it should be safe. When you use Bennett on a Mondstadt expedition, the time consumed is reduced by 25%. So Bennett is great for sending off on expeditions and have them done more quickly. So those are all the combat talents and passive talents available to Bennett. A nice simple little bunch, but he has access to one of the most powerful elemental bursts in the game. Fantastic Voyage can not only heal a team, it can also provide a massive attack boost, increasing everyone's DPS so long as they stay within the inspiration field. But let's move on to the next section where we briefly talk about the constellations. Now like I said, these guides are mainly aimed at free to play and low spender players. So these guides are mainly aimed for characters who are constellation level zero. However, there's one or two constellations I need to talk about when it comes to Bennett. First of all is constellation level one, Grand Expectation. This is a constellation that I strongly advise anyone who wants to use Bennett to get, as Grand Expectation removes the limitations behind your elemental burst. So Fantastic Voyage's attack increase no longer has a HP restriction and gains an additional 20% of Bennett's base attack. This means that a character can be below 70% health and still get that attack increase that Bennett will supply. However, your elemental burst will still only be able to heal up to 70% of the character's maximum HP, so that's something you need to be aware of. Now while the other constellations for Bennett are all fine, they provide nice buffs for the character, there is another one we need to talk about which is Fire Ventures with me, constellation level 6. When you activate constellation level 6, sword, claymore or polearm wielding characters within the Fantastic Voyages inspiration field will gain a 15% pyro damage bonus and on top of that their weapons will be infused with pyro, meaning that all their normal attacks will be pyro attacks instead which on paper sounds perfectly fine and it can work really well with certain team compositions. Whilst this would be great for certain melt team compositions, it can in some respects limit the amount of teams that Bennett can be used in. So think of it in a way as you specialise Bennett more towards a pyro infusing character similar to Chong Yun in some respects, but as a result it means he's less of a universal character. For example, physical main DPSers will now no longer be able to use Bennett's elemental burst as their high damage in physical attacks will become weaker pyro attacks. It also means that his elemental burst will be very useless when it comes to pyro enemies. And in all honesty, it feels like C6 Bennett could be considered a little bit of a trap. Put it this way, C6 Bennett works incredibly well when it comes to melt and vaporize compositions. However, it means that he is completely useless when it comes to physical compositions and freeze compositions. If you don't have Bennett in C6, he can be used in all of these compositions regardless. But at the end of the day, the choice is down to you. It depends if you want to use him more as a specialized character or if you want to use him more as a universal character. But anyway, let's move on to the next section where we talk about the builds that I like to use for Bennett. Now Bennett's moves and abilities, especially his elemental burst, make him absolutely a beast when it comes to a support and healer character. But he can still dish out damage. As a result, there are two builds that I would like to show off for Bennett here. One being a support focus build and the other a DPS build if you want to use him more as a main DPS or sub DPS. So first of all is the support build that I like to use for Bennett. This build is all about using his elemental burst as much as possible to benefit the entire team, providing them with that healing as well as that attack boost increase. Also thanks to the artifacts we're using will provide more attack to a team, allowing everyone to be even stronger. So first of all when it comes to the weapons you have a few options available to you here. Remember though that we want to primarily go for a weapon that has a high base attack. When it comes to the swords, unless you're going for 5 star weapons, normally the highest base attacks you can get are around the 565 mark or the 510 mark. 
but you also want to consider the other stats available to you. Swords that have crit rate or crit damage are fine, energy recharge is very optimal, and if not you can even go for something like Elemental Mastery. So the options I would advise you to get if you can would be first Festering Desire if you have it. This will provide us energy recharge and on top of that it will increase the elemental skill damage by 32% and on top of that it will also increase our elemental skill crit by 12%. So it increases our passions overload a little bit whilst obviously the energy recharge allowing us to use our elemental burst more often. Another energy recharge weapon you may want to consider is the Favonius Sword which again provides us energy recharge and on top of that critical hits have a chance of generating elemental particles for us but the base attack on this weapon is slightly lower than desired another option would be the sacrificial greatsword which again gives us energy recharge and on top of that after damaging an opponent with your elemental skill you'll have a percentage chance of that elemental skill cooldown being ended meaning that you can potentially perform your elemental skill twice in a row this generates a large number of particles for us, allowing us to use our elemental burst potentially more often. But again, with the sacrificial sword it does have a lower base attack, which is something you need to be aware of. Failing that, if you have access to none of these weapons, you can craft the prototype Rancor if you so wish. Whilst the physical damage bonus on this weapon isn't too hot, nor the smashing stone bonus, which on hit increases your attack and defense, it does nonetheless have one of the highest base attacks at 565 for a 4 star weapon. So your attack bonus provided through your elemental burst will be higher when using this weapon. But it means that your elemental burst may not be able to be used as often because it lacks energy recharge. Now when it comes to the artifacts for this support build I'd strongly advise going for 4 pieces of the Noblesse Oblige set. The 5th piece can of course be anything you want to fill in the stats that you miss. Now with the Noblesse Oblige set for wearing 2 pieces of the artifact set you'll gain a 20% damage increase to your elemental burst which is just fine as we want to be using our elemental burst quite often. But more importantly, for wearing 4 pieces of the Noblesse Oblige set, when you use your elemental burst, it will increase all party members' attack by 20% for 12 seconds. So, on top of our elemental burst providing the healing, as well as that attack bonus from our base attack, our team will also gain another attack increase thanks to the Noblesse Oblige set, meaning that the Fantastic Voyage vastly boosts our team. But what about the stats? Now, as this is a support build more than a damage focused build, I'm going to be focusing more on HP and energy recharge more than anything else. You can switch this around if you wanted to and go for instead crit rate and crit damage and attack, but we're primarily using Bennett here for his elemental burst, his healing and his attack boost. So when it comes to the sands you either want to go for HP or energy recharge. When it comes to your goblet you'll either want to go for HP again or you could go for pyro damage if you want his elemental burst and elemental skill to bite a little. And then finally when it comes to your circlet you want to go for either HP or failing that you can go for crit rate if you wanted to especially if you're using the Favonia sword. But as for the substats on these you'll mainly want to go for energy recharge or HP. This is then followed by crit rate and crit damage and then attack. Now when it comes to your talent priority you'll want to mainly focus on fantastic voyage or elemental burst. Afterwards focus on passion overload your elemental skill and then finally if you want to you can focus on your normal attacks strike of fortune. But we're primarily not going to be using Bennett for his normal attacks with this build. It's a case of performing his elemental skill, getting his elemental burst on the go, rinse and repeat. This is normally the quintessential way to play Bennett. His ability to support team is almost unsurpassed and this build enhances his support capabilities by enabling him to provide a massive attack boost to the team as well as heal them quite effectively with that increased HP, making this my personal go-to build for Bennett. But Bennett can actually do more than just heal, he can be used as a DPS if you so desire. Whilst he may not be seen as a main DPS, he can nonetheless hit hard with the right build. So for this DPS build, when it comes to the weaponry, I'd recommend going for something that has critical rate or critical damage on it. Something like the Black Sword would be a great option if you have the battle pass. This will provide us a nice amount of critical rate and on top of that our normal and charged attacks will also heal us as well. If not, you could also use something like the Flute, which gives us a nice attack percentage. And on top of that, normal and charged attacks grant us a little bonus that can potentially give us a massive AoE that deals 100% attack damage to opponents around us. Or if you wanted to, especially if you're using an elemental team, you could use the Iron Sting, which gives us an elemental mastery increase. And on top of that, dealing elemental damage increases all damage by a certain percentage for a certain amount of time. Finally, Harbinger of Dawn is also a nice option if you're using Bennett as a DPS, which gives us a crit damage boost as well as crit rate boost so long as we can keep Bennett's health above 90%. 
Now, when it comes to the artifacts for this DPS Bennett build, we want to go for four pieces of the Crimson Witch of Flames. This is a set that when we're wearing two pieces, we'll gain a pyro damage increase of 15%, and for wearing four pieces, it will also increase the overload and burning damage by 40%. It will also increase the damage of Vaporize and Melt by 15%. And also using Elemental Skills increases the 2 set bonus by 50% of its starting value for 10 seconds. And this can stack up to 3 times. So this allows Bennett to deal massive amounts of Pyro damage and increases the damage of the various Elemental Reactions that you can create. Also thanks to Bennett's Elemental Skill being on a very quick cooldown, you should easily be able to get these stacks for a maximum Pyro damage increase. But when it comes to the stats on these, First of all, when it comes to your Sands, you'll want to go for either Elemental Mastery or Attack Percentage. When it comes to your Goblet, you'll want to go for Pyro Damage. And then when it comes to your Circlet, you'll either want to go for Crit Rate or Crit Damage. As for your substats, Crit Rate and Crit Damage are King, followed by Attack Percentage and Elemental Mastery. And then if you have no other options, you can also go for Energy Recharge to allow you to use your Elemental Burst a little bit more. As for the talent priorities, again, I'd still favour going for your elemental burst first, followed by your elemental skill, and then your normal attacks. Although you shouldn't disregard your normal attacks if you are using Bennett as a DPS. Now Bennett may not have the highest amount of DPS out there, but this build still allows him to perform quite well in a DPS role. And despite being a DPS, he can still heal and provide a buff to a team thanks to his elemental burst. Of course, if you're going through the game for the first time and you're looking for an early artifact set to use for Bennett, I'd recommend going for the Exile set. Wearing four pieces of the Exile set will give us an energy recharge increase, and for using four pieces, when you use an elemental burst, it regenerates two energy for all party members every two seconds for six seconds. So it helps Bennett use his elemental burst more often, and also recharge everyone else's elemental burst as well. But every character in Genshin Impact, regardless of if you're four star or five star, comes with various pros and cons. No character is absolutely perfect. When it comes to Captain of Benny's Adventure Team, his biggest pro is his Elemental Burst buff. His Elemental Burst being able to easily provide a massive attack bonus to allies makes him a vital character in many team compositions. This can enhance any character, making them deal more damage. The other pro for Bennett is that his Elemental Burst also heals. Whilst the healing will heal allies up to 100%, it can nonetheless keep players alive so long as they're fighting within the Fantastic Voyages inspiration field. And if Bennett is spec for HP, this healing effect is also quite fast, almost negating the fact that Bennett's Elemental Burst only heals up to 70%. And the other pro for Bennett is his Elemental Skill is on a very quick cooldown, meaning that he can easily recharge his Elemental Burst and use it over and over again. But every character has cons. When it comes to Bennett, his biggest con is that his Elemental Bursts have limitations which you need C1, Constellation Level 1, to counter. And the other con, which is again related to Constellations, is you need to be wary of Constellation Level 6. Whilst it can be a boon for some players out there and certain team compositions, you also have to remember that it does reduce how effective Bennett can be in certain compositions. So you need to be sure you want Bennett at C6 before you activate it. But regardless, the cons are outweighed by the pros for Bennett, making him a great support character, allowing a team to increase their attack, as well as heal them. But every character is made more effective thanks to the team composition that they play within. And when it comes to Bennett, he's quite a universal character, meaning that he can fit into pretty much any team. He works really well when it comes to teams that also have a second Pyro character in, thanks to the fact that he'll also contribute to the Pyro resonance, increasing the team's overall attack. He can also work really well in Melt and Vaporize compositions, meaning he works well with Cryo and Hydro characters. The only team composition Bennett may struggle in a slight bit is Freeze compositions, but it's not impossible to use him in a Freeze composition unless you've activated a C6 Bennett. But overall, Bennett is one of the best characters in Genshin Impact currently. He is featured in a lot of endgame team compositions, and he has helped many players take on some of the most challenging content in the game. Meaning despite his unlucky nature, he has become a fan favourite and someone you can rely on when it comes to combat in Genshin Impact. So there we have it, that is my character guide and overview to Bennett in Genshin Impact. Now remember there are multiple ways to play and use the characters in the game, which is one of the many reasons that I love Genshin Impact. So at the end of the day, use the characters how you want to use them. These builds are just how I personally use the characters and I hope they help you out in your adventures. So until next time, I've been Darkblade bring you a character guide to Bennett in Genshin Impact. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.